With over 500 miles of trails and 80,000 acres of wilderness, Shenandoah National Park can be a great place for backcountry campers to explore. Believe it or not, tens of thousands of people come to camp in Shenandoah's backcountry each year. We do our best to manage that use in ways that will allow a great experience now and in the future. The key is to minimize impacts every way possible. You can help by following the regulations for backcountry camping. All backcountry campers are required to obtain a free backcountry camping permit. If you're planning more than two weeks in advance, you can call the park and a permit will be mailed to you. You have to get your permit at least an hour before sunset. If you're unfamiliar with the park and its regulations, you should get your permit at one of the visitor centers during open hours. Dickey Ridge Visitor Center is near the northern entrance at mile 4.5, and Bird Visitor Center is in the center of the park at mile post 51. If you're familiar with the regulations and you know your route, you can use the self-registration kiosks at all park entrances, at the north and south entry points of the Appalachian Trail, and at the Old Rag Fee Station. You need to know that campfires are strictly prohibited in Shenandoah's backcountry. You'll need a backpacking stove if you want to cook. Another consideration is the treatment of human waste. To help keep streams free of fecal contamination, you need to be prepared to bury solid waste. Dig a hole six to eight inches deep and be sure you are at least 20 yards from streams, trails, and roads. There are a few privies in Shenandoah's backcountry, so use those when you're near AT huts and other high use areas. Shenandoah has a large black bear population, and there's lots of other wildlife out there, too. The last thing you want is to have valuable camping gear, not to mention all your food, destroyed by wildlife, especially when it's relatively easy to avoid. Store all your food and scented items like toothpaste and gum properly. Bring about 50 feet of rope and a bag that will hold all the items that might tempt wildlife. Hang your food from a tree limb at least 10 feet up and 4 feet from the trunk. Or, you can use an approved bear-resistant food storage container. The Appalachian Trail Huts are equipped with food storage poles. Keep your group small. The rule is no more than 10 people. If you have more than 10, split up and plan separate routes. There are a few areas that have particularly sensitive resources or that are very popular with day hikers, so overnight camping is not allowed. Be sure you know these areas. Old Rag Mountain, above 2,800 feet. Hawksbill Mountain, above 3,600 feet. The area of White Oak Canyon Trail above the Cedar Run Link Trail Junction. Big Meadows and Limberlost areas and within one half mile of Rapidan Camp. All of these places are marked with signs. When you choose your campsite, set up a quarter of a mile away from Skyline Drive, the park boundary, and park facilities. 100 yards from day use shelters and cabins. 50 yards away from other camping groups, from standing historic ruins, and from areas marked with no camping signs. 20 yards from park trails and fire roads. 10 yards from springs and streams. If you find an already impacted campsite that complies with these distances, use it rather than impacting another area. If there's no pre-existing campsite, get out of sight of the trail, use the area lightly, and try to leave it just as you found it. Pack out your trash. Leave no trace of your visit. If you choose to bring along a pet, remember that they must be leashed at all times. Be sure your pet's in good physical condition and familiarize yourself with the short list of trails where pets are prohibited. If you're hiking along the Appalachian Trail and plan to be out for three or more consecutive nights, you may use the AT huts. Check a map for their locations. If the hut is already occupied, use the nearby designated tent sites. 
These regulations are designed to help protect and preserve Shenandoah's backcountry. Now, let's talk just a bit about protecting you. Stay hydrated and be sure to bring along some way of purifying water. No matter how clear the water looks, it can be contaminated and make you sick. Know the ability level of everyone in your group. Don't plan a trip that will put someone at risk. Know the weather situation. It's usually at least 10 degrees cooler on the mountain. That can be the difference between rain and ice. Lightning is very dangerous, and stream crossing can be tricky if there's been heavy rain. Know where you're going. Have a good recent map and know how to read it. Regularly updated maps are available from the Potomac Appalachian Trail Club. Trails are blazed and junctions are marked with posts. Watch out for standing dead trees when you select your campsite. Don't set up under a dead limb. Don't leave valuables in your car in view. Team up with one or more companions for safety and be aware of your surroundings. Good planning makes a great backcountry adventure. Take care of yourself and take care of your park.